It's Saturday, April 4th. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel, and today we're going to continue means testing the IHME data, the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation data. This will be the third in the series. About every two days, we're going to be taking a look at this data and seeing how the actual numbers compare to the projections. This data is important because this is what the government is using in planning their response to this epidemic. According to the Johns Hopkins COVID-19 website, as of today, Saturday, April 4th, the most current data they have, 1,115,000 cases worldwide, 62,376 deaths worldwide from the COVID-19 coronavirus. Here in the United States, 290,606 confirmed cases here in the United States, 7,826 deaths. 1,867 deaths just in New York City. And this is as of the 4th of April, 9.43 a.m. In other news, we're getting some much needed rain. Again, here in Northern California, it's gonna be raining all weekend here at this elevation. A good amount of snow in the High Sierra. We just had our snow survey for at the beginning of the month of April and we were only about statewide average 50% of our normal snowpack to date. So despite the rain and snow we're getting here in March, our dry February has put us behind the curve for snow and rain for this year. Over at Orville Reservoir, they're still at just over 800 foot, 810 foot elevation. The water level is just very slowly coming up in Oroville. We want to see that elevation up closer to 850 feet this time of year, and we'd like to top off the reservoir to close to 900 feet by May. Whether we'll do that this year remains to be seen. I kind of doubt it. The main reason we have as much water as we do in Oroville currently is because of last year's good rain and snow pack. And thanks again so much for your constructive comments in the comment section below on this series. It's giving all of us a better understanding of this epidemic around the world. And some folks, a couple of comments say, Brownie, why don't you just stick to airplanes? Well, you obviously haven't been around long enough to remember the Oroville situation that put this channel on the map. And besides, we're not going to have much aviation to talk about until we get over the hump of this epidemic. In the meantime, those that are still flying, you got to stay focused. Don't get distracted. Every time we go through one of these economic situations in the airlines, and any time that it looks like your job is on the line of getting furloughed, laid off, or what have you, it's very hard to stay focused in the cockpit and stay focused on your job at hand. We're seeing some more incidents out there that looks like there are cases of folks being pilots getting distracted and not paying attention to the task at hand flying the aircraft. So let's go inside and take a closer look at this data. We're going to go back and try a screenshot program as I've got a little better audio set up this time around. Back to the healthdata.org website, U.S. state-by-state -state projections. United States, 11 days till the peak resource use on April 15th of 2020. Bed shortage, 87,674. ICU bed shortage, 19,863. Four days ago, here's what the data looked like. Deaths per day continue to rise exponentially. We'll be looking at the logarithmic charts on the New York Times website here in a minute. 900 deaths per day as of the 1st of April. Still projecting a total of 93,531 deaths by 4 August. This is up from the projection of four days ago, 83,967. Now let's go see what's happening in New York. Currently 63,120 beds short, 11,064 ICU beds short. The solid purple line indicating beds available, 13,000. The solid green line way down here at the bottom, ICU beds available, 718. 
So well above both of those parameters indicating the misery index, the misery that's going on in New York and New York City especially. Now let's go down and look at the deaths per day. 401 deaths per day as of 1 April, still rising exponentially, doubling about every three days, with a peak expected in about six days before the rate of death begins to decrease. Looks like finishing off by around the beginning of May. Still, still yielding about 16,261 deaths overall by August 4th. A bit of an increase in this projection compared to just four days ago. Now let's go over to California and see what's going on. Where our resources available still exceed our needs. Number of deaths per day. The curve is flattening somewhat to a doubling rate of about five days for the rate to double. As of April 1, about 31 deaths per day. But that flattening of the curve means that it's going to peak out later. We're talking about 22 days until we reach the peak. Still yielding about 5,068 projected deaths for California by August 4th. 200 and, correction, 204 total deaths as of the 1st of April. This data is down a little bit from four days ago and unchanged from just two days ago. Now let's go over to the charts on the New York Times. Remember, since the death rate is such an exponential growth, the only way we can really look at it at any changes in the rates of death is to lay it out on a logarithmic scale. So on the vertical axis is the deaths in a log logarithmic scale, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, tenfold increases on the vertical axis. On the horizontal axis is the number of days. In this case, the number of days since they start with 25 deaths. Now we all know that the, the data out of mainland China is questionable and probably grossly underreported. The important part is the shape of that curve is beginning to flatten out after 45 days. Italy, 15,362 total deaths. Their death rate is beginning to flatten out a bit, doubling every 11 days. Remember on this logarithmic chart, if your death rate doubles every two days, you're, the slope of, your, of the tangent of, of your curve is going to look like this. If your death rate doubles every two days, the slope looks like this. If your death rate doubles every three days, your slope looks like this and every week way down here and every month. So if you take, let's look at Spain, you take the tangent of Spain here towards the end of the data and we can see that they are doubling every six days. So the death rates are beginning to slow down slightly. But look at the United States here. We're still on a pretty steep uphill curve the tangent to the U.S. data towards the end here shows a doubling still every three days. Way down here towards the bottom, Japan and South Korea, with their extreme measures in place, they've really been able to flatten this curve. Let's go down and look at the states. California doubling every five days, Washington State doubling every 10 days, they're doing a good job of flattening the curve. New York still doubling every three days. So I hope this gives you a better understanding of the data and its impact here in the United States on the global coronavirus. Thank you for your support. We'll see you here.